Welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm Ryan Green, and today we are exploring the Snowflake and Fivetran partnership. I'm in Snowflake's Dublin, California office, and I am delighted to be joined by Frank Slootman, Chairman and CEO of Snowflake, along with George Fraser, Co-Founder and CEO of Fivetran. We'll discuss their synergies, their perspective on the current economic environment, and their future vision of the data cloud. We have a lot to cover, so let's jump into it. Frank, George, great to have you on the program today. You bet, great to be here. Frank, to start with, can you walk the audience through the Snowflake and Fivetran partnership? And I understand there is some overlap between your two businesses, but why do customers love your joint solution? You know, the number one thing to understand about the business that, that Fivetran and Snowflake are in is, you know, we are trying to unsilo the world of data. I mean, data silos have been the bane of our data existence since the beginning of computing. And it's extremely hard to do because every time you have a new application, a new workload, you have a new silo. It, it's happening without even trying, right? Uh, data typically does not originate in Snowflake. It comes from other systems, you know, Oracle, SQL Server, SAP, uh, Workday, ServiceNow, Salesforce. How does that get into Snowflake? Well, enter Fivetrain. So they have completely specialized themselves, not just in building these condu conduits, but making them you know, very fast, making them very easy to use, making them very economical. That's why this partnership is so important. We can't do our magic without Fivetrain doing theirs. And George, from your perspective, what are you hearing from customers? Well, we've worked together with Snowflake for many years, and customers have always loved Snowflake. Customers love the simplicity. Snowflake takes very hard problems and makes them easy. You know, operating Snowflake is like uh, operating a Gmail account. We've always had a great partnership, um, you know, creating value for these, these customers together. Uh, I, I can't agree more about what a massive and annoying problem uh, data integration is. Uh, I, I like to say that the world has had a data integration problem ever since the world had two databases. You know, whenever whenever they spun up the second database, you know, at IBM in 1958, they were like, oh, but no, that table isn't that one, not that one, and now we have a problem. What is kind of unusual about Fivetran is our vision is we really try to disappear. We try to make it feel like the data did originate in Snowflake. You know, we our, our whole goal always is to make the data pipelines invisible so that you can forget that they're there. You know, the data is perfect replica of the data source and it's updating in real time and so you can you can sit there looking at snowflake and and forget for a minute that the data didn't all originate there you know gentlemen thank you for that perspective great to have a baseline now i want to bring it to current day as we're all aware we find ourselves in a very difficult economic environment for both of you sitting in the roles as ceos how are you noticing companies leveraging data to make better decisions and improve their overall strategies. Frank, if you'd like to start. Yeah, you know, look, data and data strategy and data operations is no longer optional. We live in a disintermediated world, direct to consumer. We can only parse reality through data rather than what I call anecdotal observation, which is reading your email, talking to people, and hoping that the world didn't change that much since, since yesterday. You know, when you have spikes in inflation, when you have pandemics, when you have supply chains upside down, the only way to, to, to drive institutions and enterprises is through data. So you have the oversight and the understanding and the insight as well as the predictability. Everybody is, is rushing right now to acquire the systems, the foundations, the processes, and the skills, you know, to really harness uh, the power of data. And George, from your seat, what are you saying? Well, I see this from two perspectives. I, I see what our customers are doing, and our customers are feeling the macroeconomic pressure. One of the things we track very closely at Fivetran is uh, customers adding and removing pipelines, and even adding and removing individual tables. And we follow that through all the way to the impact on consumption and ultimately on revenue for us. And since about mid last year, you know, we saw for companies under 500 people, an absolute inflection where they were clearly value engineering. You know, they were scrutinizing everything to make sure that they were only running what they needed to. At the same time, the things they need, they need more than ever. Uh, the uh, the importance of data takes on a whole new importance in, in tough times right. and in trying to understand what's really happening and, and what's really working, what's not working, where you're spending money that it, it has ROI. And that's the other perspective I look at this from is, is a CEO of a company trying to use data to navigate these conditions. And, and we have a whole new zeal in the last year at Fivetran for um, 
looking at the uh, data we have and looking at it in the right way to really understand what is happening of what we are doing, what is working, what is getting better, what is getting worse. Um, something I talk about a lot these days at Fivetran, I used to be a scientist uh, before I was the CEO of a technology company, and I talk a lot about the difference between data and evidence. You know, it's not enough just to show that X is correlated with Y and therefore, you know, my product initiative worked. It's like, well, hang on a second, <laughs> you know, we're, so maybe those customers were different to begin with. So it's, it's become something I, I advocate for a lot is, is getting everyone at the company to not just, not just put the system together, which has become easy now uh, because of tools uh, like ours, um, but to actually synthesize that into meaningful evidence and to really understand what is working, uh, what do we know, what don't we know, um, and using data to draw conclusions I think is actually the, the next level now that a lot of the technology problems have been solved. And we're doing a lot of experiments and, and things of that nature at Fivetran to, um, to try to drive efficiency and to drive higher growth. You know, I want to explore this a little bit deeper, tough economic climate. Frank, from your perspective, why does Snowflake's consumption model shine during these difficult times? I used to run a, a large uh, SaaS subscription company, and I always felt that it was very biased towards the vendor and not the customer, because they would buy use rights, which is very nice, but if you weren't using it, you were still paying. And I always felt that was an imbalance in the relationship between the software company and, and the people that bought it. Consumption is like, hey, you pay for what you use at a very, very granular level, really by the machine second, right? right. They can throttle up and they can throttle down, you know, as they see fit. I find that equitable. We, we take that problem, we internalize that rather than give that problem to the customer. So consumption models, you know, is the way the future all software companies, and you already see that with the, with the public cloud providers, they're all consumption based. This is the way everybody will end up in the, in the fullness of time. You know. And George, you mentioned it previously, but I understand that Fivetran has also adopted a consumption model. Why'd you decide to go this route and what have been your key takeaways? Back in 2020, that we switched from a subscription based model, um, and in many ways a somewhat subjective model, to an objective consumption based model. And I agree with everything you said, Frank. It, it creates a very profound alignment exactly. uh, between vendor and customer. Sometimes that alignment can be painful. If you, if something is not going right, you feel it instantly. You can't sit there and pretend that things are still going great until the subscription expires, uh, which you know the customer stopped using six months ago. I think it's ultimately to the benefit of everyone, and that's part of the reason we adopted uh, consumption-based pricing back in 2020. Snowflake has really been a pioneer in consumption-based pricing. You know, the consumption-based pricing, um, Snowflake was not the first to do it, but uh, Snowflake has done it in a more granular way than I think anybody else. And in Fivetran's original, uh, when we moved to consumption-based pricing, our, our model was based on uh, Snowflake's consumption-based pricing. There are still cases today where, you know, a price will come out for a customer and I will look at it and go, boy, that does not make sense. So it's not, it's not perfect, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's served us well. Uh, and, I, and it does create that that great alignment between vendor and customer that I think is so powerful. One thing that I've observed, I'm curious to hear more from you about over the years uh, at Snowflake, you know, one of the things that happens with consumption-based pricing is, is when you make optimizations, this is kind of specific to a you know, data infrastructure <laughs> environment, when you make optimizations like Graviton or search optimized tables, that can actually drive consumption down because uh, Snowflake becomes faster. Uh, I think this, is, this really doesn't get talked about enough, but there have been a lot of these over the years. I'm curious that there's a perverse incentive there, and that must be a challenge to navigate internally and, and externally. Yeah, being a public company, uh, we've actually uh, you know, felt the brunt of that because we uh, relentlessly and consistently and methodically over time optimize both the compute side as well as the storage side of the equation. People are getting discounts from us all the time. Unfortunately, they don't always realize it. The financial community is like, hey, how is this a good thing for investors? Well, then look, we're guided by what's good for customers first, okay? <laughs> and uh, you're gonna have to learn to live with that, you know, that people are gonna get way more bang for their buck every year. And I think, again, it's fantastic, right? because we, we deliver these discounts to customers without them even having to realize it or do anything. 
So when I when we go public and I'm on earnings calls, I can just I can just <laughs> refer them to you, right? Just say like like Frank said. <laughs> the financial community will uh, you know will never be totally happy because of course they like models that are biased towards the vendor because that's who they're investing in. But you know our customer relationships you know uh, really trump you know the investor relationship. It has to be that way. You know. We've covered a lot. Great to hear your perspective on the partnership, your current perspective on the difficult economic environment. Now I want to look towards the future. How do you see Fivetran and Snowflake accelerating the data cloud vision? And how important will ease of use and lack of complexity be in the years to come? I'll emphasize one vector of, uh, of that, and George, I'm sure, will we'll have you know, many others. But some of the problems that we've been solving together is to, is to massively speed up cycle time, right? And people want to report yesterday's news in a timely manner, not two days later, right? Um, you know, so like customers like Pitney Bowes, you know, we went from 31 hours to two hours to be able to accomplish this across all their different operating units, all the different data formats, all the different feeds, right? And this is where, you know, where Fivetran has been really instrumental. But where is, where is the world going? to real time or what we like to call it near real time because nothing is ever real time. So in other words, you know, we're updating constantly, right? And it becomes sub-second, microseconds, milliseconds. And that's very interesting, right? Because we can now react to things that we see in the data, you know, in, in near real time. Our world has been very, very batch oriented historically. That is changing and, you know, Fivetran you know, is, is helping enable that change to con continuous streaming ingest and transformation of data. And that's a big change for the world, you know. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Uh, reducing latency is a huge priority. I actually have a meeting with uh, some people on the product team at Snowflake this afternoon. Uh, about Very timely. <laughs> aligning uh, some details deep in the weeds, making sure that we're we're sort of skating together so that uh, the, the things that we're working on and the things that Snowflake is working on that will result in customers being able to get, you know, 10 seconds latency out of a data source like Oracle or HANA, which has challenges at every single stage in order to achieve that, to make sure that that is ultimately possible. Um, so I, I think latency is a huge priority uh, for, for both of us. Scale is a huge priority. The, the future for Fivetran and Snowflake, you know, the, the early years of our partnership, was a, lo a lot of it was about selling to Bay Area technology companies and other early adopters. And Snowflake was always a couple years ahead of Fivetran in terms of penetrating the market. And so we worked together a lot with the commercial team at Snowflake. Uh, and pretty much like everybody you see, if you look over in San Francisco, they were all adopting Fivetran, Snowflake, one after the other. And they loved that it was so fast to set up. They were pulling in data sources like Salesforce and you know, Postgres on Amazon RDS and, and Stripe. Uh, and that was great. It was wonderful. Uh, we, we created a lot of value for a lot of customers. Uh, over the last few years, we've been doing more and more big companies together and older companies. And they have a unique set of data sources. You know, they're pulling in data sources like Oracle, like HANA, like Workday, right near here. Uh, and those, the data sets are larger. Um, there's more complexity. Uh, when a company has been around for a long time, they accumulate a lot of complexity. That's how it works. When they do acquisitions, oftentimes when you go in and look at these companies, you discover the IT infrastructure is like a, a microcosm of all the acquisitions they've ever done. Uh, and so the challenges are greater, but, but the value to be unlocked uh, is, is greater. And so if you look at a lot of the stuff we're doing today, you know, with customers like Thomson Reuters pulling in HANA data and uh, Oracle data and and trying to achieve these super low latencies despite these absolutely huge data volumes and do it all without exploding the ingest costs in, inside of Snowflake. It's, it's very challenging, but those challenges are, are, are exciting and there's so, much, there's so much great value to be unlocked. So that's, that's what we're working on together. I'm particularly excited in particular about HANA as a data source. Yeah. Uh, HANA uh, and SAP in general, I'm sort of obsessed with. It's something that I think the average person doesn't know a lot about. Um, but SAP is so big. SAP is behind the scenes of so many big companies. You know, if you just like walk around the world, <laughs> uh, you look at a uh, you know toothpaste on the shelf at the grocery store. That probably is tracked in SAP system. Uh, if you look at if you go fill up you know, your car with gas uh, at the gas station, that gas it was probably the well <laughs> that it was mined at was was tracked in an SAP system, and the uh, 
the truck <laughs> that brought it to the station was probably tracked into an SAP system. And we have some of uh, the largest customers in the world of SAP using Fivetran and Snowflake together because they want to they want to work with that incredibly valuable data inside of Snowflake and marry it with all their other data sources. So I think if there's one initiative I'm most excited about that we're working on together, it's probably that one. Well, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm excited to see what's next for Snowflake and Fivetran. Thank you so much for joining me today. You bet, Ryan. Thank you.